Hey, 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 what is going on, good people? Welcome to another episode of The Road It Took The Show. Y'all know who I got up in here. I got the one and only Coach Tucker. What's going on, Coach Tucker? Hey, y'all, hey. How's everybody doing? Oh, man. Man, man. man. We it's back. Been. Like we never left. Okay, we back. That's what I said. <laughs> we, <never laughs> we back, we back. But I think we got a good one for the people. What you think? I think we do. I think this is a very, we took our time preparing this thing so we ready we ready we ready y'all I to jump up. first of all before we get right to it um what, what you got going anything new going on with you took anything uh, so <laughs> much new stuff bro listen literally took my arm and did this <laughs> and now <laughs> now i'm training for a marathon the mayor she didn't pull the marathon princess out of retirement yes. she retired the marathon princess and they pulled out of retirement. Yeah, I did. I retired for good reason at the time. Yes, yes. At the time. So that's funny because uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk yeah, a little bit about I that. Did, yeah. uh, so we are doing the Marine Corps Marathon October 27th. Seven. October yep. 27th of 2024 here in the DMV area. So listen, if y'all listen, y'all can join us now. OK, we have we have a whole team of several people that that, that decided to join us and um, some people doing the marathon some people doing the uh the 10k so which is only what 6.2 miles i think yes yeah. 6.2 yeah, 6. miles so you can do it virtually the marathon is too much no pressure no pressure okay you, you can do it virtually uh sign up and do it from the privacy of your own you know geographical area or you can come here in the dmv okay and run with me and took a run slash walk run slash walk hey, promise not to leave me I won't leave you. I said to the leave me. We will start together. We will finish together. That is my promise. Yeah. But I also say whatever you did your last marathon in, we will beat that. Beat we will beat that. So um so it's all about progress. Right? It's all about yeah. progress. But it's been going well. Um y'all gotta follow us, okay? Follow us. We have a whole YouTube um channel that's kind of tracking the the day to day, um, what we're doing for uh our training, because it's every day. It's every yeah, day. Training. Okay, we've had some ordeals. Okay, if you follow us in our story, some things have okay, it's been funny times. Okay, but we are pressing our way through, I'm pressing our way That's through. Cool. So, y'all, just <laughs> follow us. Uh, me on Inst <clears throat> Instagram, Rochelle T. Parks, our coach took them on Instagram. So, follow us and um, just because we can need some, we, we need some cheerleaders. Okay, we okay. listen, if you're not gonna do the race, you can always come with a sign, you know, cheer for us. Go to the go row. Go we to the go row. We need that too. <laughs> we, need we need that, that too. We need that too. So you are. Uh, uh, this is a topic that um, I think it's going to resonate with some people. Yeah, I think I you know, it. prayerfully, the scales will be you know removed off people's eyes, and they will stop you know being delusional. And uh, we just believe in getting like just getting straight to it because the whole idea we're doing these things to help people to move the needle. That's, That's why we're doing it. Helping That's people it. to move the needle. Like, like we don't have to stay stuck. Okay. So you have goals, aspirations, like in your, in your health, in your, in your physical fitness, in your business, in your relationships, yep. in your spiritual yep. walk, like um, with your kids, with your husband, like whomever It's helping you to move the needle. So we're coming up with these topics and I think you're going to like this one. So this one is um, reminiscent of a, uh, uh, you got I guess you gotta be you, you about to disclose your age, okay? okay. You I'm don't mind saying, telling us. I'm about you about to tell how old we really are because it's some people who might not know this. They may not know that. Okay, well here it is. You might not know. What have you done for me lately? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, 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 yeah. See, I don't know nothing about that. I don't know nothing about that. I don't know nothing about that. Some of them but might that is the topic for today. What have you done for me lately? And um this came about like that's what the body is asking like really like that's what the body like what have you done for me lately lately not not what you did 10 years ago five years ago you were at your fight weight okay we use that to fight like what have you done for me lately that's lately. what the body is asking and mm -hmm. so like like I wonder what would people say? You know what I'm saying? Like, like what would, what, like, what would your, like, like for those of you that are watching, like, what is your response? When, like, what have you done for your body? Like, type it in the chat. 
What yeah. have you done for your body today? Huh? Mm -hmm. Have you done anything today? Like, like, like I say, I have a saying, I say, when you give your body what it needs to thrive, it will. Have you given your body something it needs, what to, it needs to thrive today? Today. Huh? What have you, that's what the body is asking. And so we, we want the body to perform. You know, Tuka was just saying she was out there, um, and, and you know, running this three miles, and they want the body to perform. And you know, no, she, no, no. she had eaten a few things. The body was like, "Oh, really? You want you want me to go up this hill, huh?" In full transparency, okay, I said, "Body, get me up the hill." And the body said, "Why you think we supposed to do that? <laughs> <laughs> what? What should, in what world can we eat like you ate?" Okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna tell the whole truth about it. I ran in front of the man that sold some amazing popcorn, and let's just say I, I have a full understanding of all the flavors he offers. Okay, <laughs> Not the full understanding. I, I understand the menu. Okay, so my body said, "Ma'am, how, how, how? Really, the truth is how disrespectful of you <laughs> to think that you can eat like that, and I'm supposed to get you up this hill like I did last week." Wow. <laughs> Before last. The body was like, nah, you had it. when you got you up the hill, how, how had you eaten? It was you was on point. Yeah, I had been eating pretty pretty decent. Yeah, I've been doing pretty good. You know, I would have a tree here and there, but I really would say this weekend, I did not live my appropriate life. Okay, um, did not. Okay, knowing you and had, I, I told her I felt the weight of my choices. Mm. I felt literally, the weight. literally and figuratively. Literally and figuratively, I felt every dis in what discretion of the weekend, indiscretion of the weekend, I felt it in my run. And so I think the other thing too, I want to say this, and I don't know if this is related to what we're talking about, this training for the marathon, it makes you hyper aware. It mm -hmm. makes it difficult to um, not pay attention to what your body is saying mm -hmm. because you're asking the body to do something so far out of the norm of what you have been doing. Yeah. that you are aware of when you do treating it well and when you're not it shows up quickly mm -hmm. you know and it's training so oh, oh i know that i, I know it that um as soon as you start running you feel you feel, you feel your it. legs your legs yep. feel light do they feel heavy yeah like how's your breathing like like you're like man i've only run a mile and i got eight more to go like yep. these legs feel heavy you know what i'm saying so, heavy. And, and this is what i know like my legs don't feel heavy when I eat leafy greens. Right. Do not. <laughs> they do, do not, not feel heavy. Do not. They don't feel heavy when, when I drink water and eat, and eat God's food. They don't feel heavy. But when I do some, a lot of, uh, like, say, red meats, a lot of um, sugar, as in yep. pasta or pasta, bread yep. or, like, rice, oh, they feel heavy. You feel it. You, you feel, feel it. it. you like, Way oh, down. Goodness. Way down. And you're right, like it doesn't, like if I'm just doing a, if you're just walking, like just normal walk, you don't necessarily feel it. But when you're trying to go out and run, when you got to pick them up and put them down on a run, you know, you, yeah. your body is like, uh, excuse me, like, like excuse what me. You do? What you do? Your body said, what, what do you want from me? Okay. <laughs> what do you yeah. want from me? Like literally, I, you know, I didn't think about that. When you're doing a marathon, it really shows up. It's, it's I'm hyper aware. I, I mean, everything is my sleep. Um, I'm like, I noticed, okay, you didn't really give your body enough. I'm so aware of what my body needs while we're going through this process. And I, it's that's making it exciting for me because mm -hmm. even though I've done marathons before, I've never paid attention to what my body needs. Yeah. Six marathons before, I just got out there, I ran, you mm -hmm. know, and did what I got the miles done, but they weren't the best. And, and I think this yeah. time when we're doing it, I have a stand, a different standard. Because uh -huh. the app is adjusting mm -hmm. based on what you've done. So when I enter my time and my level of fatigue, he makes a change. Yeah, that's good. So the pace that I, yeah, the pace that I have now that he gave me now is faster because mm -hmm. last week I was here. You was doing it. Like minimal fatigue. See? Then you go live your best weekend life or 4th of July life, okay? <laughs> and then... You come back trying to do the same thing you did last week, and the body's like, "I'm not gonna be able to do it." I'm not. So my body be... said, "What have What have you done for me? <laughs> what have you done for me lately?" But you know what? what? Like, 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 all jokes aside, like, um, nobody, you don't really hear people talking about what they've done, like, 
lately. Right they, now. You, know, you hear people talking about what they used to do. Back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day. Back okay. in the day. When I was the six pack, when they had the, you know, when everything was hitting and holding and that, you know what I'm saying? And they could wear this and wear that. And athletic accolades and all the things. They were like, all the things. I used to be. <laughs> I used to be. I used to be. And so, so here it is, y'all. We're going to give y'all just three points to consider, right? Three points to consider. Uh, really, it's really two points. And, and then the third point is just how you should move forward, right? How about that? How you should move forward. So, mm -hmm. I want to share this with you all. Point number one is uh, there's no growth in comfort. There's no growth in comfort. There's no growth in comfort, but that's where the people want to be. Because when the people yep. start talking about the past, they smile. Yep. They, they, I mean, I mean, they that yeah, they feel good talking about the good old days, though. Good. Like, the good old days when I was in my prime, when I was maybe looking fly, okay, looking good, wearing this particular size. I was so cute and felt like you couldn't untouch you. Yeah, I'm gonna feel good. untouchable. Good but touch it is in the past. I was, I had, I, was. I wore, okay. Yep. Everything is in the past. And so, you you know what? And, and, I, and I think people love talking about it because, I mean, it feels good. It feels good to talk about what good. used to be. It feels yeah. good to talk about how, how you used to win, you know. And um, I say it's no growth and comfort. So it reminds yeah. me of, and I think I shared this with you before. To the, so one of my um, former uh, business partners, when we first started, you know, probably doing like the fruit and veggie challenge. And I'm helping people, coaching people, whatever. And we would have these wins, you know, whether... Yeah. Somebody lost weight or some some whatever mm -hmm. win, you know, with, with the happened? client. And I'd be excited. And we would get on the phone, maybe FaceTime. She'd be like, okay, bro, you got 10 minutes. 10 minutes to rejoice. Party, like, okay, okay we're we going we to clap <laughs> it up. We're going to rejoice. She said, after that, we got to move on. Like, no more. No more celebrate. I'd be like, yeah. I remember the first time she said, I was like, what? Like, why? Why we can't keep talking? She said, bro, we can't. If we keep talking about it, we're not growing. We're not growing. That's it. And that's the thing, because it's like, it feels good to talk about the past, but, and I think you acknowledge it, but you can't get stuck there. Like reminiscing, like how we used to be, what you, how you used to look, what you used to do, what you did. It's like, no, you got to grow. But the reason why we stay stuck back there is like you said, there's no growth and comfort. So we ain't trying to be in comfort. When that discomfort hit though. <laughs> and, and that was the thing, whenever we move forward, that was discomforting. Right, but that's when the growth happened. But every time, right. you know, like, no, I want to stay here. I want to talk more. She's like, no, no, you. Got I to like it here. here. I like it here. It feels good here. And she's like, no, we gotta go. We gotta, we gotta go. Let's start thinking about this. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to think about that. It's like, uh, yeah. it was stretch. It was stretching me. Look, look. Yeah. But what happens stretch. when you stretch? You grow. You know what this reminds. Reminds me of when you took, because this is always the part I don't think that you get to share with people because people look at you. I used to, I remember you would have the ads and in the ads, you're doing push ups and all these things. And people would literally think that when they were coming to your class, that they were going to be working out. They, they get their shock to find out you talking about food. But I remember you telling me the season in which you were really like training the heaviest, how painful it was, and how you cried and how you just were like it was so hard one of the hardest things you ever did you told me i remember you telling me how you would take pj with you to the gym and bring y'all meals and all these adjustments and things that would be just uncomfortable right but to get there you had to get uncomfortable now you're there and people looking and they and they want the guns but are they willing to do that they don't know the work i did yeah i man my trainer demetrius used to push me so hard I remember, um, so I don't know if you're familiar with like putting straps on your arms, you know, straps to be able to hold on to the weight. Yeah. You know, sometimes the yeah. weight is so heavy, but you need the straps to hold on to it. And, and my, I would be so tired that I wouldn't even hold on to the uh, only thing that'd be holding up the bar would be the straps. I, and I'd be doing, it could be like five pounds on the thing, but the five pounds felt like 500, but I would yeah. be so done and I'd be crying. You know, but 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 it was we, he was pushing me to a point. He was pushing, he was and pushing. making you stronger. It's the it's the it's, it's the, so that's it. It's like every day these moments of discomfort is like just like building Rochelle's guns. Okay, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I mean, literally, 
it was that back workout. Oh, they used to break me down so bad. I'd li literally be crying. But I tell you what, when I got on that stage, because this was um, a training for a bodybuilding competition, when I got on the stage, to hear those judges say, your yes, back sir. looks like a road map. Yeah. Okay? It made it made all that training worthwhile. Oh, it'll be worth it, yep. It made all of it worth it because had he not pushed me like that, I wouldn't have gotten those type of comments. And you'd have never got it if you'd have said, now look, Demetrius, I did this last week. <laughs> you know, last week I was in here giving you everything I got. You wouldn't have got it. Wouldn't have got it. So it's so very uncomfortable. Um, yeah, because if, if we've trained on just being comfort, like comfortable, then we, yeah, we weren't going to see any growth. Like I probably wouldn't even made it on the stage, but because... Yep. I pushed and I trained and I was uncomfortable most of the time, you know, I was able to um, train at a record pace and Ooh, like 10, 10, 11 minutes, 10, I mean, not 11, yeah. 10 or 11 months. I was on stage from the moment we started July of 99 in June of 2000, I was on the stage. Yeah. You see, but, but that, but that was like, uh, so you're talking about a whole year of discomfort, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> literally a whole year of discomfort, like, who, like are you willing to do that? Yeah. Who's willing to, to do a whole year of discomfort for that for that moment? For for that moment to, to reach yeah, the, the moment. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you can't so as much as I didn't like it when my partner was telling me that, I, I eventually understood it. And then, yeah. then I was like, Okay, I know I know what this is now. But in the beginning I was like, What I'm like, how come we can't? She's like, Well, no, no, we gotta yeah. go. You can't if we stay here then we're not growing. The longer we stay here, the longer we're staying here. Huh? Yeah. Did you catch that? Yeah. The longer yep. we stay here, the longer we're staying here. You just underscore two things. I'm asking you a question, but you just underscore two things. This is why people need a coach. Because a coach, you just gave two examples of two co really essentially coaches that you had that saw something you needed to do that you would have never saw if you were operating out here by yourself. So I always say like a coach gives you an unbiased look mm -hmm. at what you can't see, your little blind areas that you can't see just That's being right. you. That's right. so I wanted to ask you, why do you think it is that people are so afraid of discomfort? Like, why don't why don't you think we embrace it? Why are we so like, oh my goodness, mm -mm. I'm not it, trying to stretch it because it hurts, Tuka. Mm -hmm. Like literally, like that hurt, and it's it's because of the word. It's uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortable. Who, who really willingly wants to be uncomfortable? Yeah. See, you, you have to understand the principle. Yeah. See, if you don't get the principle, then you you like, why 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 would I why would I invite that on myself? Like, no. Yeah. Well, you do it because that's what I said when I was out there running. If you never push through, you'll never get to it. You never get through. And that's I think that's the part that people are afraid of, like this unknown. Like we enjoy being able to predict what's gonna happen next. So when you go into this uncharted territory, it's like I don't know. <laughs> Do what's going to happen but in that sense you do know though you think they do you, know you don't trust I, I i believe it's a matter of trust because i know faith, yeah trust and faith yeah i know just like we tell the people if you do the work you will get the results we just say if you do the work you might we say if you do the work you will get the results i think i think it's unknown in the sense of you could be working towards one thing but you have no idea so when you were training with demetrius you never could have imagined that your back would look like a road map, that you would literally be your your guns would be the thing that would draw people to you. You see what I'm saying? So you didn't know. And that's what happens when you move in the unknown. That's right. You, would be. you probably was just thinking, I'm gonna do this little show and go on about my life, not knowing 20 years later, I'm gonna still have guns that I'm that I'm building yeah. right now. So yeah. the unknown doesn't always have to be a bad thing. Like it doesn't always yeah. have to be a scary thing. Like yeah. it could be something that exceeds yeah. what you're looking for. Like me. If I was about to say, no. you, it always exceeds though. That's the thing. Tucker. You always oh, want to get more than you even something. thought. So you, you, you move That's it. looking for one thing and you get five things. Okay. Five things. I mean, I can think a of a whole me. new version of you, a whole new body version of you. <laughs> like you said, a body that you be like, who is this woman? All because I moved forward. All because I I understood the principle that you reap yeah, what you sow. That's it. That's I, it. I understood the principle that if I, if I do the work, I'm gonna get the results. That's it. That's life. You like yeah. you cannot. You can listen. Okay, I'm about to I'm about to go to my 
my other point now, okay? My, okay, my third point. Ahead. But listen, but you, you cannot, okay, hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Let me, let me, let me share. Right. Let, 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 let me get here. Let me get here. Okay. Here's point number two. You can't stay where you are and get to where you're trying to go. You cannot stay where you are and get to where you're trying to go. So, so it's like, we want these results, but we don't want to do the work. We don't want to be uncomfortable in essence. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm like, so I'm like, well, how do you, how do you, how do you expect to get these results? Like, yeah. how do you expect to achieve a thing without enduring something? Yeah. Without, without sacrificing something. See, cause, cause the, 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 uh, the discomfort can be in sacrifice. It can be, it don't have to be a physical pain. It can be a physical pain. It can be a sacrifice. It can be a mental you know what I'm saying? It, it can be, it can come in, it's just, it's discomfort. And that can come mm-hmm. in many different ways. Okay. The unknown, that's just, that's the uncomfortable. Unknown, yep. Okay. Right. Like um, put, putting faith in something other than yourself. Okay. That's yeah. uncomfortable for some people. It's uncomfortable. Right. Yep. When you just totally been relying on you for how many years you're alive. Now you got to put faith in something else, put faith in somebody else's system, put faith in somebody else's belief. Okay. So when Demetrius said, I need you, this, this is how we're going to train. I believed, I believed him. Yeah. He said, if you do this, I promise you, we, we can get these results. I believed him. When I came to you, I said, Tuka, if, do you trust me? Cause that, see that yeah. right there, listen, that statement stems from my relationship with my trainer. Yeah. And I knew if That's I didn't the only trust way him, you're going to move when you, when you really don't know, that's the only way you're going to do it. That's the only way. So if, if I, if I didn't trust him, I wouldn't have done what I did. Okay. And and so I saw, okay, you do this. I believe he was, he was the product of his own product. Right. So I saw he was a walking billboard. Yeah. So I'm like, he can help me do this too. I trust him. So I'm going to do whatever he tells me to do. So before we can do anything, I was like, Tuka, do you trust me? Cause if you don't trust me, then we have nothing. We got nothing. And there, and there was no way. Some of the things I was asked to do, I'm telling you, there was sometimes I I'm like, I don't, no, why I'm doing it. I just what Rose said to do, okay? I don't know why I can't have ice cream. Yet. I don't know. You know, because my family and friends were like, well, I mean, you got to do this, you got to do that. Well, why she got you? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I didn't, I did not bother to ask. I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do, okay? But one it, thing, it's working. one thing we knew, took a one of results, took a one to lose 50 pounds. That That's really the only thing I knew. Took a one to lose 50 pounds. I knew that's she That's all you knew. <laughs> to lose 50 pounds so i'm like well you, you definitely want to make some changes like you can't yeah. stay right here and lose these 50 pounds okay. and we can't do none of what you said you've been doing because we know yeah. that doesn't work none. okay because those things um you know it's like uh um, when you're like you it's almost like they're cozy they're so comforting you know what i'm saying yeah. like my, my ice, ice cream is you know the feeling this is one of okay this is the example i want to give one of the best things in life to me is being on my couch with a blanket and a book like this has to be what heaven feels like ice cream does the same thing Mm. so so to let it go it was like my entire do you understand my entire life it has just been a good day bad day whatever kind of day ice cream your birthday it's a holiday ice cream is th- so it felt so like cozy yeah yeah <laughs> you know what I'm saying? so the whole time i'm just waiting for my i'm waiting for my comfortable moment mm. i'm waiting like for rhoda just give me permission to have that because i've been a very good girl okay so in my mind i deserve it okay i've been following this plan to a t i deserve it yeah. But if we had, if I had held on to that version of myself, we would not have ever made it here. No. Absolutely. We wouldn't have ever made it here. Absolutely not. And I didn't understand. I came to you and you gave me a riddle. Yep. The riddle was, stop asking. And I'm like. Yeah, Yo, okay. For those that don't know, here was the situation. I'm a woman <laughs> on a mission. We're about four or five months in, y'all. I mean, took at this point, probably lost about 40, 50 pounds, something like that. She was doing great. Okay. I mean, you like you said. All the plans for tea. Like following the plan to a T, like being the model uh, uh, client, the model student, right? Doing everything. Um, one day, I think, I don't know, because we FaceTime a lot. So we may have been FaceTiming. I don't know. And Tuka asked me one day, Coach Roll, so um, well, when, when can I have ice cream? And it was in that moment. It was in that moment when I when I realized Tuka hadn't really changed. I hadn't changed mentally. 
like her body had changed. Like she had been doing the work, yeah. but her mindset was still the same. So and all this went through my head, like real quick. And in that moment, and God gave, this is what he told me to say. <laughs> God gave her a riddle. God gave me a, <laughs> when you stop asking for it. And, and, and I was like trying to solve it. I'm like, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to solve a riddle. Like what? Like what? I said, yeah, when, ask, that, when, you know. it, when you stop asking. When you stop for, asking. Because if we're at this point, and you still, and that's all you want to know is when you can have ice cream. I'm like, what have we been doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? I'm like, this is a lifestyle. This is not a diet. It's not a diet. You know, it's a lifestyle, right? And she didn't get it. And um, I don't even know if I explained it. I just, I just said what I said. That was the end of the conversation. That was it. So what I was left with initially was trying to figure out the riddle. So I'm like, okay, don't ask her no more. If you can have it. So how will you know? And what I said is just forget about it. You know what I'm saying? Because I was locked and loaded on. We were on the brink of going to a place I had never been before on my own. In your health. So like, yes. So I was like, if I got to give up ice cream, like I'm staying here. Like I made a committed decision. I'm staying here and I don't need to know why. I'm just, uh, I guess I can't have it. I guess the lady's saying no ice cream. That's the way I took it. Like, yeah. let it go. Yeah. That's, it for the thing, <laughs> that's the thing you all like. Many people don't want to give things up. Like you don't want to, like you, you really, most people are trying to get results. Like, okay. That's why I came up with this saying. You can't have changes without changing. Without changing. And most people want changes, but they don't want to change. So I'm like, you can't shout out to uh, uh, Dr. Eric Thomas, okay, ET, the hip hop preacher. He used to say, you can't stay where you are and get to where you mm -hmm. trying to go. Yeah, like you just can't do it. Like you, like change requires change. You can't think about it. If you want to go here, you, like you, you gotta, you, you gotta move. You gotta move. You gotta move. And you, you can't be tethered. You can't be tethered to there. Yeah, right. You can't be tethered to there. Right. You got to let it go. You, you got to let that go. So we have to let the ice cream go temporarily. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. When I'm coaching people, it's, it's never forever. Forever. It, that's what people think it in their feels mind. That way. I it know. feels that way because of your, your viewpoint of unknown. So we were in the unknown, honestly, because I think we were like, right. I was in a season where it was like, okay, let's see what this thing going to do. Because because we had hit the 50. I think by then my um my fibroids had improved. Like I had so many improvements. I wasn't anemic anymore. I wasn't tired. So I'm like, okay, let's see what this thing gonna do. You yeah. know, and so yeah. I just knew that we were getting closer to something. And I just wanted to see how how far this train was gonna go. Yeah, that's it, man. We we just yeah. have to be willing to be uncomfortable, which took a was, right? She was. The different examples. She was doing this point. I was doing the bodybuilding training. I was um, when I first started out in my business. I was uncomfortable, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because when my partner was trying to push me, I was like, "Oh Lord, mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable." But every time, every time I was pushed is when I grew. Mm -hmm. Every single time I pushed is when I it was it was it was growth in my business, growth yeah. in me as a person. Like every time I'm stretching, even today, even to this day, mm -hmm. I have people in my life that push me, that stretch yeah. me. Yeah. And every time there's growth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Every time, like in our relationship, every time push, you know, yeah. there's growth. Yeah. So I'm telling you, so if, you, if you're comfortable, you're not growing. You're not growing. You're not growing. You're not growing. Okay. If you're comfortable, you're not moving. You're not. That there should be. And I'm not saying there should never be any time of comfort because you can celebrate. Like she, she gave me 10 minutes. 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrate the we out. And then boom, we out. We gotta yep. now, now let's go. What's next? I remember being at um at a retreat. At a retreat. We're at a retreat. And me and Tiff talking about plans for the next retreat. Yeah. And we're at yeah, one. Remember that. Yeah. And, and, and that's that's how the whole conference on the end of the retreat came about. We would yep. when we were at a retreat, what we talking about? It. I remember that. But do you know like the other reason why I think she had you doing that? 
is because it's a breaking momentum. Like people don't think about that. Like yeah. you so busy celebrating, you forgot to come back over here and work. Like you over here That's just right. living your best celebratory That's life. Right. No, we got to keep this momentum. That's like, right. And then so the the even just stopping, even if you you know you it needs to be a small you know consistent steps towards yeah. the goal. Yeah, it yeah. needs to stay consistent. Absolutely. After that, you know, Tim talks about she says that's one of the biggest mistakes entrepreneurs can make um, is losing momentum. Losing momentum. Losing momentum. Like you got to ride that wave because it is an ebb and flow. Like you know, what I'm saying it is. So, 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 so when it's up, you need to ride it. Okay. Yeah. Like, like ride it. Like yeah. it, it will naturally come down anyway. But don't prematurely yeah. have it come down because right. because you already celebrate. You party like you celebrate. Party. Okay. <laughs> You over here dancing. Over the yeah, yeah, I get it. And you losing yeah. momentum, right? So yeah, yeah you need to be um, working towards the thing every day. So once you set, once you have the destination in mind, I hear you saying you need to make a plan and be grind hustling for that thing every day. All right, every a step, every consistent steps, not the steps you took two two weeks ago, two years ago, twenty years ago. The steps forward towards where you're trying to go. And here's the thing, you talk about unknown, but is it really unknown? Is it really unknown? Because this this is what I say, like for my people, somebody hit me up the other day and said they want to work with me one on one. I said, why do you want to work with me? They said they're tired of this, they're tired of, you know, doing this thing on their own, doing this like their way doesn't work. I said, how confident are you that I can help you? They said, I'm very confident. I, I know you can help so 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 that's not unknown like i mm -hmm. i know and i trust and i believe that you can help me. yeah therefore do whatever it takes you yeah. see like do the work when the person comes in the shit ain't sweet can i say if you came here and you told different if you're not fully convinced that this thing is gonna like then leave like get out of here don't come in here mm -hmm. unless you know yeah. this thing is gonna work yep so it's not really and i know it's just a person refusing to be uncomfortable because yeah. it didn't say that the, the results were going to come without discomfort there will without be some discomfort, discomfort. there Ooh, will i talked about that this morning i taught i taught about how you're looking at somebody else you're looking at this other person and you're thinking wouldn't it be nice to have what they have or you're thinking that they possess something you don't like she or he has this because they are lucky they bless it's right. almost like i remember how people would say um you know oprah i would i would lose weight too if i had a chef right maybe you wouldn't because your chef make what you tell the chef to make so maybe you would tell the chef to make what you like that's right <laughs> yeah so maybe you wouldn't so it doesn't boil down to this person having something that you don't but it does boil down to them being willing to do something that you're not willing to do that's, that's it what's in the way you have them what they have that's it you know that's it. That's it. That's it. So, so when you say, well, why do you, why do, why do I believe people, um, don't want to be uncomfortable? Yeah. Cause, because they don't want to be uncomfortable. <laughs> that's it. They, they don't want to be uncomfortable. They, they want to stay in a little warm, fuzzy blanket. That's right. On the couch. <laughs> and talk, about, and talk about yesteryear. Okay. Talk about who they I used to be, how they used to be, what they used to wear, how they, what they used to be able to do all that. That's all. It's that's comforting. Look, that's and that stuff that you used to wear and came back around in style, and you still in the same place. <laughs> it's, it's in style again. <laughs> you see? So, yeah, that's it. Like, I'm like, so it's not really unknown. Yeah. Like, you know. Like, you people know. know. I'm like, it's no way. That's why I'm like, y'all have seen enough testimonies. Like, I don't believe that people. No. Like, no, no, no. What it is is you, 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 you would much rather stay where you are. Yeah. Just talk. Because, see, okay, okay, I don't care. My step on the toe. It looks good to look like you're working. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. See, it looks and good. It's easy, that's easier to do in the world we live in. Present yourself one way. You don't have no intent. So you rather instead of coming in here being like, you know what? I know you can help me. What? What? That? I'll do whatever. You, no, you come like, can you? I don't think you can help me. I don't. I don't. I ain't doing that because I don't think because you don't want to do no work, no way. I don't want to okay. do it. You know, I call that putting the lipstick on the pig. That's it. You don't want to do the work anyway. So you, do it. it looks good to look like you were. You, you're a coward. You're the same person 
that that want to help everybody else don't want to help yourself because it looks good to, to help everybody else. But you don't want to help yourself because help yourself requires work, and guess what? That requires being uncomfortable. Yeah. And nobody wants to be uncomfortable. It's some no. people that it's not the norm. It's not the norm. Okay. The norm. And you know what I mean when I say that. Okay. Most it's people not the don't norm. want to be uncomfortable. So so you must try to put your efforts in helping somebody else. See, you 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 do that discomfort, right? Yep. You do that just helping somebody else, but when it comes to helping you, because that means you have to change. Okay, you have to change yeah. your mindset, change your change your habits. Change. It's a lot. Okay, yeah. you got to deprive yourself. You got to sacrifice. You got to, You see, it's a yeah. lot. It, it may be some physical pain, depending on what it is. If you exercise and you ain't moved your body, now all of a sudden your muscle sore. This, this. I mean, it's a lot. And who wants to do that willingly? Very few. Yeah. People. I'm gonna tell you though, when when you start this the journey to moving towards the healing. It unco- this is the reason why I also feel like people don't want to get uncomfortable. There are things like truths about you that get uncovered. And I know from my own experience, there were things that I felt like, baby, we didn't already fix that. Don't get, Lord, don't give me nothing else to fix about me. Because mm. you're good. You know, it's like, I don't want to unpack this in this season of my life. Mm. That's really when you call me a sugar addict, I'm like, I'm not sure, baby. I just want to look good in the outfit. I was trying to unpack <laughs> the, tra- seriously, the trauma of addiction. Yeah. That my fa- you know what I'm saying? That my father was addicted to drugs and alcohol. Mm. I'm not trying to. Mm-mm. I got my nice little folded up memories. How we going to do this thing? I'm not trying to unpack this stuff and you come call somebody at it. You know? And so it's like, it's easier to talk about what you used to do and how it used to be because when you move forward the fun there's going to be some honest conversations that you are going to have to have with you about you that's right that's right so it's so i i had learned that's the reason you got poor boundaries with people and you mm. with yourself because you tell yourself you ain't gonna do it but show sure enough be doing it so you don't know how to Tell them no, and you don't have to tell you, you know, either. Your boundaries is Jack, sis. I had to have an honest conversation with me. Jack. With you don't have people none. And yourself. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So your word is trash. Your word, yeah. like your word. No, Period. You know, Period. Period. Your word is trash. And then when you start to do the thing you told yourself you was going to do, do you know what that does for your confidence? But you never get to experience it until you do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And and the only difference between doing it and not doing it is just a decision. That's it's a decision. It. And either way, you're already making a decision. Deciding not to do it. Make decisions. decisions. You you're making them. Okay. Yeah. How about let's making them? How about let's make them in a way that that you'll benefit because you're making decisions. People say they don't want to make. No, you're making a decision. You already made it. And think about this. You saying you don't want to get uncomfortable. You kind of already uncomfortable. Living with a chronic illness, living. <laughs> I'm telling you, my blood pressure was like 140 ish over 90, like 140s over 100 with the medication. Mm. That, that, yeah, that ain't uncomfortable because I sure enough kept a headache of some form. Sure enough kept a headache. So I'm, now I'm short tempered. I was talking to somebody the other day. Oh, oh. Bro, I need to put you on through. I was talking to one of my former coworkers. She called me this weekend and she was just think, talking about back in the day. And she said, man, I really miss when we, we all work together. And uh, she said, man, I would come to your room and you always had some snacks. I said, yes, I did. She said, <laughs> she said, if I was hungry, I knew I could come to your room because you'd be like, hold on now, I got something in here. <laughs> she said, you kept a snack. I said, I did. And she said, because uh she said and when you got hungry boy boy you turned into a little mean something i said i told rochelle that i was a different part the hungry me is not no, it was nobody you wanted to play with okay so we just gonna keep these snacks so everybody can be safe wow. but i said i mean i said that was how that's uncomfortable that's very uncomfortable I, that's uncomfortable to be in relationship with that person mm. you understand what i'm saying like that ain't even a comfortable relationship because they ain't ate they got attitude with you and you ain't even did nothing to them. That ain't comfortable. Wow. It's uncomfortable not even control what you your emotions, what you feeling because you hungry. Mm. 
And you're on a rampage till you get some beat. That sound right, Tucker. That sound right. So that, I'm saying that, when that you, you would yeah. be angry because you haven't eaten. Yeah, that used to be some kind of short-tempered, okay? Like, if you don't move out my face, I get something to eat. So that's why I felt like I was doing the wise thing by keeping a snack. I always had a snack. Okay, yes, I had a whole everybody's benefit, huh? Everybody, okay? <laughs> Keep people safe. Okay, I work with children. I work with children. Wow. Wow. What everybody say? Wow. So, okay. So, what have you done for me lately? You I also, here's the thing. We can't live in the past, y'all. We can't live in the past. Okay. We like the body really wants to know, um, like, what have you done? What have you what done have for you me done? lately? Like, what are you, what are, what are you giving me so that I may thrive? Yeah. Why, why are you choosing to stay here when you know here is not where we should be? Yeah. Some people are like actively choosing to stay in a place. And then there's some who, and I mentioned this to you before, some who have gotten results knowing there's more, you can get more, but you choose you more. to stay here because you, because you, you, in your mind, you've been uncomfortable enough. Yeah. You, you don't want to be uncomfortable anymore, even though you know you have more weight to lose. Yeah. Your blood pressure can get better. Your blood shouldn't get better. You yeah. like, you have results to get, but you like, you know what? I, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm, you become complacent. I'm not as I'm not as on as many medications as they are. That's right. You start comparing yourself. They are. Start comparing yourself mm -hmm. to other people, and that becomes your yeah. your uh, your measuring stick. Well, mm -hmm. I was on three. Now I'm just on one. I'm good. Right. But is yeah. it the best? You taught me that. Is that the best that you can have? I know. I've, I've lost. I've lost thirty pounds. I'm good. But you still yes. obese. Right? You understand your BMI is still over 30. Yeah. You're still obese. Yeah. So what are we talking about? Yeah. Right? Like, like great. Let's celebrate Let's 10 celebrate. minutes. Okay, you lost you 30 minutes. Momentum. Let's okay. keep going. Now we got to keep going. Yeah. That's the thing. We got to keep going, you all. We have to yeah. keep going. You know, and so that's why it's optimal health. Optimal health. Optimal not just the health you want to have, <laughs> not, not the health you're selling for. <laughs> it's not settled health, it's optimal health. And most people just settling for whatever yeah. is better than it was before. So I'm grateful, you know, and I'm not saying to not be grateful. Yeah. What I'm saying is, what have you done for yeah. me lately? Yeah. That, that's, that's the thing. So, so how, so how do we help the people to move forward to the, uh, I'm going to pull this up. How do we help the people to move forward? I'm, I'm going to say this. Okay. I have live, live in the now, live yep. in the now. And so, and so when I say live in the now, what, what I really mean is be an active participant in giving your body what it needs now. Okay. Yeah, so that you may benefit in the future. Yeah. Yeah. So live, living in the now but like, shout out to uh, uh, nine to five millionaire Jamal King. Living in the now, like what you do now is for your future self. It's for your future self. And where you, so like where you are right now is based on what has happened. But you're, what you're doing today can change the whole game for you. But if you just keep doing this, you already know what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. You already know that there's no, like, that's it. This is it for you. Okay. Yep. So your focus should be on the changes that you can make every single day. And the thing that kind of blows my mind about Sugar and Sweet Academy is <laughs> all the Sugar and Sweet programs. Ro has literally given us a step-by-step -step daily operating manual. <laughs> okay. The hack is to do what she told you to do every day. That's the hack. Well, we could take a, a simple thing, baby, and make that thing as complex as we as we want it to be. But but we know why. The people don't do it. They don't want to be uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? They don't want to sacrifice. Like I said, discomfort comes in many forms. Yeah. It could be physical, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be mental. Okay. Um, like people don't want to sacrifice. They don't want to give up. 
they're like you said, giving up your ice cream when that's all you knew was ice cream. Like that's 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 not easy for people. Yeah. You know, because some people like their whole day, who they are as a man or a woman is wrapped up in what they eat. Oh yeah, that was me. I told you that. I told you I was always either finishing a meal or thinking about what I was just getting done eating or thinking about what I'm about to eat. That was the whole day. And that's whole many day. People that, that sounds crazy to me, but that's many people's existence. Oh, man. It's all wrapped around food. So so this thing, y'all, but you can apply this to any area of your life. Yeah. Like any what area you, of your life. What you do for you now, what, like what you do in your business right now, what you do in your business right now is for your future. You understand, like, like, like if, like, if I were to record some videos, like today, that's not going to be for the. That's that's for future. That's right. that's right. That's you understand. That's for future business. Yeah. That's for that's for people. That's gonna that's gonna find me. That's you know, they don't even know you yet. Don't even know me today. Yeah. Don't don't even know me today. Yeah. But but I'll record the videos today. Yeah. For the future, for my future business, you all. So we have to live in the now, be active participant, active participant in giving whatever your body, your business, your relationships, like you name it, like whatever, whatever it needs today, so yeah. that it may benefit in the future. Yeah. Active and consistent participant. Yes. Like consistent. Because yes. just like the song say, What have you done for me lately? She was talking about a guy who used to do nice stuff for her. <laughs> you know, he used to do nice things. Yeah. But today he's standing up and that's how your body feels when you used to, you know, give it what it needs to thrive, keep your weight in line, not be on medication. But now you just you ain't showing up. You ain't showing up. Not showing up. What have you done for me lately? Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, I wonder what you were doing. That's about 30 years old. <laughs> it's oh, oh, yeah, it is. Because I was, uh, I remember being a little girl saying that, that line when she said, He stood you up again, again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's up with this guy? Do you really like him that much? Yes, honey. I love him. He is fine. He does a lot of nice things for me. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I must have been in high school. I think I was high school. No, you probably were. Uh, I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> I'm like five years older than you, aren't I? You're seven years older than me. Years older than you. Yeah, I was high school, Tucker. When did that come out? That I'm was, looking it up. That was in the uh, late '80s. It was in the late '80s. I would have thought, yeah, you're yeah. I graduated high school in '88. 1986. There you go. Yeah, that's 10th grade. Took a 10th grade. Nine. I remember being a little girl singing something I probably had no business singing. 11th okay. grade, 10th, 11th grade. That's right. <laughs> so I remember that was high school. Um, because that was back, uh, uh, y'all, we going back. That was back, Video Soul. Okay, top 20 countdown. Yeah, I remember Video Soul now. I remember Video Soul. Yeah, that was top 20 countdown. Um, so yeah, that's it, y'all. What have that's you it. done for me lately? Like, like stop yeah. living in the past, yeah. stop. Like it's we 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 done with that. Like we're done. Live in the now. Be an active, consistent participant yeah. in giving whatever whatever your body needs now, whatever your business needs now, whatever your relationships need now. Like whatever, right? So whatever. you can benefit in the future, yeah. right? Because we can't listen. We can't. You can't be upset, okay, about the results you don't have from the work you haven't done. You you can't yeah. you can't expect change without changing. That's it. And if you're comfortable, you ain't you ain't growing. You ain't changing. And you ain't growing. And I would say when you rest on your laurels, which is what the old folks used to say, you rest on your laurels, you miss the greatest gifts that God has in store for you. Because I know the word says he came so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. And you miss that when you work, when you rest on what you what you did. What he's done is yeah. no match for what he's about to do or what is he's capable of doing in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Missed. That's good. That's yeah, true. Missed. Don't miss that. Yeah. Don't miss that, y'all. What have you done for me lately? Mm. Mm, that's it. So we talked that's about it. there's no growth in comfort. No, so get, a little, get uncomfortable. Yeah, you can't stay where <laughs> you are and get to where you're trying to go. Yeah. And you must live in the now. 
Yeah. Just living in now. Man, that's oh it. man, oh man. That's it. And that's just, these are principles for life. For life. These are life principles. This is not. For you, like you said, for your relationship, for your business. So in your in your relationship, what are some things you used to do <laughs> in your friendships and your your romantic relationships that you just don't do no more? Cause you got them, <laughs> you got them now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they yeah. love you now, so you don't do all that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Oh man, that was good, Tucker. That was good. We did it. We did it. We backed out like we never we had a good one now. We told y'all we had a good one. Forgot y'all was there. Okay. I've been talking to I forgot y'all was there. Um, <laughs> exactly. We let, this, these are our conversations every day. Honestly, good. No, I, I promise. Know. Forgot y'all was there. Um, I was, this is what I want to know before we get out of here. Like, for my folks who's listening, which one of these points most resonate yeah. with you? Okay. There's no growth and comfort. That was point number one. Number two, you can't stay where you are and get to where you're trying to go. That was point number two. And point number three, live in the now. Which one of these um, resonate most with you and why? Like type that in the chat. I'm, I'm interested. That's in knowing. That's um, yeah, because it could be different for different people or multiple. They, they could hit you. You know, a few of them could hit you. I don't know, but I just it's curious. Curious. Um, anything you want to leave the people with took before we get out of here? That's it. Don't rest on your laurels. I had a teacher that used to tell us that, like, celebrate, like Rose said, celebrate for your 10 minutes and get back to moving because you're caught, it's costing you momentum. And God can do more for you. What He's done in the past is no measure of what's going to happen in the future. It's no measure. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it, y'all. We love it. Um, Woo, thank y'all for joining in. Look, share this, okay? Um, like, subscribe, share, share, share. Send this uh, link to, I don't know, four or five people. Share it. I think it's going to help some people. That's it. That's it. Help some people get, get, get unstuck, okay? And uh, help them to move the needle. So that is it. That is all we have, y'all. Listen, I am Rochelle T. Parks. I am your health motivator. We have here Coach Tooka. Boom, 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 boom. Tooka. I'm not going to even say my, I'm going to let you close us out with your. I'm going to close us out. Okay. Oh. I am Tanisha James, and I have the honor of being your flight attendant on your journey to the best version of yourself. It is my calling to help you put your oxygen mask on yourself first so that you can breathe life into those around you. We love you to life, and we will see you next time. Love y'all. Woo.